Hello, this is Michael Wojak with your City Council update for the meeting that took place on January 4th, 2010. Um, I'll be covering a couple of topics in this video. I'm principally talking about the um, Hal Henderson's building that's going, on, going up down in the uh, urban village area. Um, and then um, also a little bit of a year-end type update. Um, one of the, some of the feedback that I got is you might notice that the um, webcam and the background is a little bit different for, for normally from my videos and that's because I have a um, new um, portable system where I'm going to try and use more daylighting um, when I actually produce these videos as opposed to doing it in a somewhat dark room so hopefully that makes the, um, the visuals a little bit less pleasant than uh, normal. I'm, I'm still here so you're stuck with that part. Um, the um, there wasn't a whole lot on our agenda. It was a pre light agenda on January 4th, but um, a couple of things that did happen. We had our um, reappointments to um, to the different um, committees that we serve on, and um, for in, in my case, I'll be serving on um, ROCOG, which is a cooperation between um, Olmsted County and, um, and the city and some other organizations, and then also I'll be serving again on the HRA and the Environmental Commission, um, a couple other small ones, but those are the ones that I spend most of my time. Um, we actually, everyone's um, doing the same positions that they had uh, last year. Well, um, I think the big thing that we had on our topic, and there, wa there was a public hearing, and I was really actually surprised there wasn't more um, discussion taking place um, um, on this topic, but um, uh, the proposal for a um, uh, private building by um, Hal Henderson came forward, and it's a building that's principally going to be leased by the University of Minnesota, but that's a distinction that I like to make that um, it's not actually a University of Minnesota building. Um, it's a, um, you know, it's, it's it's a very different style of building than what a lot of us are accustomed to in Rochester. It's, um, you know, it's it's going into a historic area, but it's it's truly kind of a, a modern facade on and a modern design. Um, there are some things with um, that did not exactly um, fit in with the um, urban village guidelines. But in fairness to this project, this project was actually started quite a bit before those guidelines were put into place and. Um, you know, the necessity is of the schools um, early on in the process dictated some of the space requirements, but I think there are some real positives as well in this building. Um, first and foremost, it's going to be LEED certified. Now, um, you know, any, any developer is going to tell you they build quality buildings, but the reality is, is um, we know um, from experience and from seeing them, um, some of them are not really that high quality of a building. Um, the advantage of LEED certification or any other kind of certification is there's actually some sort of verification that the building um, is going to perform as, as they said it was going to perform. Anyone can build anything and call it green, but it um, doesn't necessarily mean it's true. In this particular case, when you have independent verification and certification like the LEED process, we have some assurance that the um, that the building is going to conform to those standards. Um, this is going to be a nine-story building. The facade is it's quite a modern looking facade. There's nine, um, to the north there is a nine-story tower and some more that's set back. Um, it's going to have a significant portion of green roofing. Um, the energy consumption of the building is solid. The um, use of um, local materials, um, which is you know good for the local economy as well, is, um, is incorporated into this building. There's um, bicycle storage, um, and it's something that it's in a location that um, to live in that area, some, you're probably not going to need to have a car. A car becomes a luxury item, and that's actually reflected in the um, amount of parking spots that were um, allocated to the building. Um, some people are skeptical of this, but I am a strong proponent of the fact that the, um, the University of Minnesota um, the intent is not necessarily to have students driving around. Now, some students are probably going to have cars, but um, as far as that goes, they'll be probably end up being responsible for finding out where they're going to figure out where they're going to park the cars. It's not going to be necessary. The services are going to be available in the core of the city. Um, this is going to be a very walkable area, and there are a number of things done to really activate the street level in front. I mean, the first floor is going to be entirely retail, which um, is going to be just wonderful to have. Um, the subterranean space is going to essentially be classroom space, from what I understand. Um, the second floor, as I understand, that the Skyway level is going to be, I have some um, other activities in it, and um, you know, I, I'm hoping that the city is taking another look as um, back to the um, Joe Weiss Skyway, where we're building a um, 1.4 million dollar Skyway to connect a building that really serves no public benefit for the connection. But if we're going to make that connection, at least we could go over the um, go over Broadway as opposed to going over. Third Street, just because um, Broadway is actually a difficult cross crossing, and if we have to connect up this building and it's going to be expensive, I think that's probably a better way to do it. And the fact that this new building of Hell's is connected by a skyway 
perhaps gives us the ability to um, to make that connection from that direction. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still don't like Skyways. I think they're an um, enormous waste of taxpayer money, especially when um, you know, you're spending $1.4 million to cross a 30-foot um, street that um, to a building that has absolutely no public benefit whatsoever. I think um, I stand by all the um, rotten things I said about the whole concept of the project. Um, that said, um, given that there is going to be a Skyway going with this building, at least we can do it in a less damning way than what we had initially intended. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very um, aware of the um, some of the neighborhood concerns. Um, I think the two concerns I've heard the most is just that there was no um, there was no input, and um, you know, the thing to keep in mind: this is not a university project; this is a private project, and um, that's going to be somewhat to the discretion of the developer. But um, you know, there, I think there's legitimate concern about um, you know this doesn't fit the nature of the. Um, area and um, you know may, may, maybe it doesn't I think there's some things that are a step in the right direction but um, bottom line is is anytime you hear something about guidelines it means it's something that um, nobody really has to follow and um, our city council hasn't shown a whole lot of um, you know haven't shown a whole lot of backbone in actually enforcing guidelines take look no further than the second street where um, hundred you know more than a hundred thousand dollars worth of um, cash and time went into developing these wonderful standards that were championed by the neighborhood that would really address some um, blight issues and um, you know uh, first um, Johnny come lately who comes by with um, any sort of um, a poorly thought out project is um, not necessarily going to have to adhere to the guidelines and I think that's um first of all it's an enormous waste of the taxpayer money second of all I think it's um very um very disrespectful to neighborhoods that uh, contributed so much time and effort in place of the guidelines. Same thing goes for the urban village. We have guidelines there. This project, um, the origin of this project predates those guidelines, but I think going forward, the next building that comes forward, um, if it doesn't conform to the guidelines that are in place, we need to really be asking why it does not conform. Um, you know, but I, I'd also point out that a lot of people who have um, raised the concerns about the building were not necessarily there uh, speaking at the meeting. and. Um, you have to realize that um, if this stuff is important to you, you got to get out there and uh, talk about it some. It's not just this issue, but every issue. And I think that um, your ability to lobby council members is something that you ought to not take for granted. Um, you know, so this this was really the the big item that was coming up. We've got our um, we had a couple other small things that happened, but really um, this this was the meat of our meeting. Now our next meeting is going to be on Wednesday um, due to the. Martin Luther King holiday, um, but thanks for your time as always, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot them my way. Thanks a lot.